Next, we need to make the shank, and we need to determine how long to make it. To begin, place a piece of paper over a ring mandrel, and place the ring top over the paper. Use a pencil to mark the top of the ring. The distance between the two lines is the length of the ring top. To figure the length of the shank, take the ring size times 2.5 millimeters and add 40 millimeters, and then subtract the length of the ring top. Two and a half millimeter square stock is used for this shank. Mark off the length that we need for the shank and scribe the line across the metal stock on all four sides. Mark another line 10 millimeters in from each end. The distance in the middle is what we want to forge as we don't want the metal two and a half millimeters thick at the bottom of the ring. That would be too thick between the fingers so we need to thin it down to about one and a half millimeters and spread it out a little to over three millimeters wide. By using a cross peen hammer, we can hammer the platinum and spread it out sideways without lengthening the platinum at all. As you hammer on the surface, it will mushroom over the edge, so we need to turn it sideways and use a flat-faced hammer to keep the sides of the platinum even. Then use the flat-faced hammer to smooth out the area you forged and to blend it into the ends of the piece. Once we've reached the dimension that we want, anneal the platinum. Heat the platinum until it turns first red, and then hold it at that temperature for approximately one minute to anneal it. Bend the shank on a ring bender and cut off the excess. We waited until now to cut the excess off as that gave us a little extra metal to hold while forging. Then file to remove any hammer marks or any marks from the ring bender. Clean up the outside of the shank and then using a half round file, clean up the inside of the ring. Then place it on a ring mandrel and using the nylon face of the hammer, straighten the ring shank out and get the correct curvature to the shank. Then use a finer cut file and go back and remove the coarser file marks and shape the shank. Examine the shank to make sure all the hammer marks are removed and that it's nice and even and tapers evenly on both sides. Next, we need to assemble the ring shank to the top of the ring. Place the ring shank on the ring mandrel and get it to the correct size. Then place the ring top overlapping the ends of the shank and using a scribe, precisely mark the ring shank where the top overlaps. Then file off the excess down to that line. You need to be precise in filing and have the correct angle and length. To make this easier, file on an angle down to the line, and then turn the shank and file straight across the end with long, deliberate strokes. Lift the file off the metal between strokes so we can watch our progress. File down straight across the end of the shank until the bevel is removed, and then we know that we have the correct angle and the correct length. And then check to make sure everything lines up. Clamp the two parts together and solder them using 1500 platinum solder. 
first tack them together from the outside and let the ring cool down. Make sure everything is aligned properly and then turn the shank over with the top down against the solder pad and flow solder from the inside to make sure that we have a good strong solder joint on both sides of the ring. Next, clean up the solder on the sides with a file and blend the shank into the baguette crown. Place the ring on a ring mandrel and using the nylon face so we don't mar the platinum or stretch it, round out the shank and make sure we have the correct size. Next, we need to form the end caps for the end of the baguettes. Take one millimeter square wire and form a U-shape that will fit down over the end of the baguette crown and shank. This will fit down over the ring on top of the seam where we soldered the shank to the baguette crown. This will cover up that seam and also make it a little stronger. Lay the baguette on top to make sure we have the correct distance for the end cap and use a millimeter gauge to measure from both sides to make sure the distance from the center crown to the outside of the baguette crown is the same on both sides. Solder the U-shapes in place by soldering the end of the wire to the shank. and then turn the ring over and from the outside flow solder all the way around the U-shape. Make certain that the U-shape is soldered solidly to the shank and also solidly to the baguette crown. Saw off the wires flush with the inside of the shank. Then using a half round hand file, clean up the inside of the ring shank. We need to clean up from where we soldered the shank to the bottom bezel and also the U-shaped pieces that we just soldered on. Then clean up the outside and square off the end caps. Use a number six cut needle file to clean off any excess solder and shape up the sides of our end caps. Then string the saw blade between the under bezel and the bottom bezel and clean out the air line. Examine it and make certain that everything is uniform and at the correct angle. Next we need to add the prongs for the three center stones. Use a one millimeter diameter cylinder burr for the two side stones and cut a line in each of the four corners. Cut through the under bezel and all the way down to the bottom bezel for the platinum wire to fit in. Once we've cut all eight notches, lay the stone on top to make sure the prongs will line up with the corner of the stone and that we've cut each one deep enough. Hold the wire up against the mounting to make sure they fit into the notches. Using a pair of end cutters, clip off sections of the wire for the prongs.
Next, lay the prongs into the notches. Because they fit into a notch, they will stay in place without rolling off. Then place a little snippet of solder on each prong, one at the bottom bezel and one on the under bezel. We are using 1300 solder. Because we're using a little lower temperature solder and do not need as hot of a flame, we can lay the snippets of solder on the mounting and solder them without blowing them off. With the higher temperature platinum solders, the torch is so hot that it blows the solder off the mounting before you can melt it in place. But with the 1300 solder, it's easier. It's more like gold solder, where we can lay the snippets of solder in place and solder without blowing them away. Heat until the solder flows, and then lift the mounting up to check and make sure the solder flowed all the way around the prongs. Heat to flow the solder if needed, and repeat on the other side. Next, we need to cut notches for the prongs for the center stone. The center prongs will be 1.2 millimeter wire, so we need to use a little bigger cylinder bird to cut the four notches. Clip off the prongs and solder in place. For these prongs, I'm holding the prong in tweezers and picking up the piece of 1300 solder on the end of the prong and soldering it to the bottom bezel. This is just a little different method of attaching the prongs. We could have attached the side prongs in the same manner or attached the center prongs in the same way that we did the side stones. I'm using a different method here just to show you another way of soldering the prongs. After soldering the prongs to the bottom bezel, use a solder pick and solder the prongs to the under bezel. Once all four prongs are soldered and the ring is cooled down, file off the excess metal on the inside of the ring shank. Then use a needle file to shape up the prongs. Round off the end of the prongs at the finger hole, and then clean off any excess solder. After cleaning with a rubber wheel, use platinum polish on a hard felt wheel to polish the mounting. Polish the entire mounting with the Tripoli before we set the stones, and the mounting is complete. Ready for the stones to be set.